Man, first of all, it's a blessing, man. I'm just uh, really thankful for the opportunity to lead. Uh, I would tell you that, yeah, I have the defensive coordinator title, but it's not a me thing. It's a us, you know, it's a we, you know. Uh, so I'm only as good as our staff and our kids and, and what we do together. And, uh, man, it's been a collective, you know, group of, of doing things the right way, trying to get better each and every day and uh, just continue to – I always say the standard is rising. Uh, so every day when we come in, you know, no matter if it's meeting time, no matter if it's just writing stuff down, no matter the little things, uh, we want to make sure that our standard is always rising on this defense, and, and it starts with me. You know, coming off of last season, what is one thing you want to see this defense take a next step as, you know, as the expectations are seemingly getting higher and higher for this team, and you all want to compete for those conference championships and division titles? Uh, I think, it, uh, you know, just the, the expectations and, the characteristics of our defense first is going to be physical. Uh, we're going to be tenacious in our effort and our attitude. And uh, the word of 2024 for us on defense is going to be discipline. Uh, we will be those three things. And uh, I think if we continue to do those things, I think we'll go really far this year. Um, you know, the expectation part and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I don't think we really feed into that. I think we just try to get better each and every day and know that, you know, we will be a great defense, but it starts with the work. You know, no, nothing will be given to us. No conference championship will be handed to us. We have to go take it. In order for us to do that, we got to put in the work every day. And that comes from the top up, you know. And, uh, you know, Coach Kenny always say habits reflect the mission. So everything we do, you know, see defensively in practice, our habits, you know, on and off the field has to reflect us getting to the mission, which is the conference championship and, and doing what we want to do for that. You talking about discipline now, why is it so important for this defense to have di discipline? Uh, I think, I mean, I was talking to the kids, you know, just talking to our young men. I think discipline is part of life. You know, you, you know, like, I'm not in this just to coach football. Like, I'm, I'm a mentor. Like, my goal is, my mission is to make sure that these kids are growing spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, you know what I'm saying, socially. So, you know, it's not just uh, on the field mm -hmm. discipline. It's, it's life discipline. You know, it's just little things. Like, we're teaching them life lessons. Like, for example, you being on time for a meeting, right? All right, if you're not on time for a professional job, they have the right to go ahead and dock you or fire you or do those type of things. So it's little things like that that the kids don't realize at this moment that we're just trying to teach them to be disciplined, and that's going to carry over us to being a great defense as well. You know, with this defense going up against this offense, how does that offense make the defense better? Man, it, it standard is rising every day. You know, the competition is of the essence. I, I, one of the pillars of the defense is competitive excellence, right? So we compete in each day, and we want to exceed the expectations of being better. You know, day by day, play by play, you're only good as your next play. You know, so, uh, you know, with Coach Mack, you know, running that offense, the offense is going to be powerful. And so we get a good look every day, which is great. So we get to, we get to, we get to hit, get here every day, which is good. You know, that tension, uh, that, that, you know, good and bad plays, you know, and I don't like to even call it bad. I like to call it the, the, it's not the standard plays or the standard is rising plays because we don't, we don't believe in bad. We just believe in getting better. It might not be the standard where we want to get, but that's why we're practicing against a great group, a great, great offense each day to get better. You know, this defense is losing a lot of key pieces. And, you know, Brian Holloway, you know, Jordan Revels. Uh, what are some players that have really stepped up this season to kind of fill in those roles? Uh, you know, I think we brought in some good transfers. I think we brought in some great, some great guys that, you know, first of all, you know, our goal was to get guys that love football. And I think we've done that. I think our guys, they love, they love coming to work every day. You know what I'm saying? They love, you know, sticking together, uh, forming that camaraderie, that unity, that brotherhood. And I know they want to win, you know, and that's the biggest thing. When you got guys that love football and that want to do that, I think that was the number one thing. Uh, you know, I'm not a big guy of singling people out and stuff like that, but I think our defense as a whole and every position I think is getting better. I think the new guys have come in and bought into the system, uh, bought into the things that we want to do. Uh, and I think, you know, each day we're going to continue to get better with those guys. I, I promise you that. Yeah. Coaching defensive backs last year, just what makes – this defensive back room so tough and like what's the next step for them to, to be even better? Yeah, I mean, obviously our goal is always to be the best secondary in the nation and, and continue to, you know, rise that standard each and every day. And so it starts with those detailed things. You know, uh, you know, I call it demandos, right? You just gotta know the defensive call. You're not you gotta know the personnel, you gotta know down and distance. That's thought that's number one. You know, and I think the back end for us, we so big on attention to details because for us, if you mess up one play, it could be touchdown, right? 
Uh, so I think the attention to detail in the back end is always going to be of the essence of what we want to teach. Uh, and then just that swagger. You know, you got to have a different confidence about you, that swagger about you when you're playing in the secondary, that next play mentality. Because sometimes, hey, you might get caught on or some things might happen, you know. But guess what? It's about the next play. It's about the next play. And I think our mindset and the way we approach things and the way we work, uh, that's our mindset at all times. So uh, our secondary is going – we're going to be good. But like I said, we going to be good, but it's going to be the work that we put in. And that's daily deposits each and, day, each and every day that we've been trying to do. You know, a position that's losing a lot of starters is linebacker. You know, Dan Foster and Brian Holloway are moving on. Just uh, who are some people that are trying to compete for those starting spots? And like, and what are their chances of like elevating themselves to be at the level of like a Brian Holloway or Dan Foster? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I, I just one thing I want to make sure everybody know that none of these kids can be Brian Holloway, mm -hmm. just like Holloway couldn't be anybody else. So you know, we talk about competitive excellence. So. The, the competition, first of all, is between you and you and then against, you know, the players amongst you, but also against the world. Uh, so I think if, if everybody in that room, we got we got some linebackers that can run, we got some guys that are smart, we got some guys that love football. So that, that room is uh, very interesting. Uh, and I think we'll, they're going to make a lot of plays in that room, believe it or not. Uh, I know they're getting, they getting coached hard. They're getting coached. Uh, Coach Pivato got a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he's doing a great job with those guys, um, you know. And they and they the stable of the defense, right? They the middle part, right? You got our D line, you know. Our D line gonna eat. That's that's the big boys up front that's gonna go get it. You know, the secondary that's got to be solid. That's make sure we attention to detail and everything we do. But that middle part gotta be the glue that sticks it all together. Um, and so I think we got a lot of linebackers uh, that's gonna that's gonna make some plays and that's gonna really shock some people. Who's who's someone that's really stepped up at that uh, linebacker's position? Even though we've been through a week of spring practice, uh, you know I, I think DJ Morning. Uh, he's he's been doing a good job in the middle. Um, you know he's a big long linebacker um, that has some experience from you know just JUCO times, uh, bounce back from Arizona. So I think he's doing a good job. I think James Neal is doing a good job. You know he's a solid kid that that played ball at UTEP. He's a smart kid, a tough minded kid. And the thing with all those linebackers, you know, not just him. You know, all those linebackers, Max, you know, Mike, you know, uh, Jordan, Smith, you know, we got all those guys. Kenny, Kenny is really athletic. Like, Kenny is a, Kenny is going to be a dog, you know. And uh, But all those guys, one thing I can say with all those guys, they love football and they want to get better. They trying to come in the meeting rooms with us as coaches, like, Coach, how can I get better? Uh, what I could have did better on this play? And so, you know, I mean, I told you about those two guys, but I, I would tell you that room, that room is really continuing to soar and get better each and every day. You know, from coaching defensive backs to now being the defensive corner, what has, I guess, your role kind of changed with just coaching-wise yeah. now that you're in charge of the entire thing? Yeah. Um, I would just say that you just have the responsibility not only, you know, being the head coach of your room, which used to just be the DBs before or safeties, uh, now it's just the head coach of the whole defense. So, uh, you know, just meetings, making sure everything is on in structure, uh, you know, making sure that we're doing the right things at all times, that we're ahead, uh, that we always thinking ahead of what's, what needs to come next. Uh, and then also just, you know, getting to the point where now I'm calling plays and doing those things. So uh, just making sure that we sound and, and calling stuff that's going to be, you know, adequate for our defense and for our personnel. You know, I mean, everybody got their different schemes, right? You got 4-2-5, 4-3, 3-4, all these things, right? When it's all said and done, it's only one football that could be chased and tackled, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just about us, you know, enforcing our defense to pursue the ball, you know, have that physicality about us, have that tenacious effort attitude when we get there, and just be disciplined about all our action. I think if we do that, uh, we'll be a great defense. So it's just a little bit more on my plate as far as leadership, uh, on running things, you know, being ahead of things, running things. But uh, it's been smooth. Uh, it's been great. And, you know, I thank God, you know, it's always a, a difference from saying that you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody say they're ready for this, but are you prepared? You know, that was my biggest thing, you know, when I was blessed enough to, you know, get this opportunity. My thing is always being prepared. It's not about being ready. It's about being prepared. You know, you play with Coach Kenny over at Tulsa. Just tell, how was he as a quarterback and what made him so good at quarterback? Uh, come again, say it again. One more so, you know, you play with Coach Kenny over there at Tulsa. Uh, being from a defensive side, like what made him such a great quarterback? Uh, you know, for me, I love to play for a quarterback. I mean, obviously head coach too, but I'm just talking about the quarterback, uh, coach, coach GJ Kenny. You know, for me, he was, he was a, to me, he was a dog. 
You know, he was somebody that you wanted to battle for. Like, he was the type of quarterback that if it's third and eight and he's scrambling, he's going to fall forward. And you know that he's going to pay the price, lay his body on the line. So it was the same token on defense. We wanted to make sure we was getting the ball back because we just trusted and knew that he was a player that we wanted to lead, that's, that's going to lead the team, that's going to make the play. That's going. And then also, he had a little, you know, look. Little guts about him, you know. Little, you know, little dog about him that that you know maybe he maybe some quarterback they like, you know they overthink. I, I tell my players all the time, I don't want overthink because I want playmakers. He was that playmaker. He wasn't an overthinker. He wasn't a guy that, oh, I shouldn't do that. No, I'ma just go make the play. You know, I've seen it. I've done it in you know high school football, Gilmore. I've done it a hundred times. You know, at Texas and then at Tulsa. So you know, for him, you know, for me as a defensive guy, being with him. I felt so comfortable getting on the field knowing all I got to do is stop somebody. All I got to do is be, be physical because I know when the ball's in G.J. Kenny hands, I know some great things going to happen. You know, back when the – you know, obviously the offense has changed when y'all were playing to now. Just what are – how has the offenses – as offenses evolved, how has the – as a defense just trying to adjust to the offensive game and just try to – as y'all are trying to limit the offense to give y'all's team a chance to win? Uh, yeah, um – that's a great question. Uh, I mean, to me, you know, obviously, you know, football is an evolving thing. You know, I think the adaptability that you are able to do and be as a coach is, is going to be of the essence. Uh, you can't be the same. It's not going to be straight ISO, 13, 22P, 12P all the time. You know, from back in the day, you got to adjust to the spread offense. You got to adjust to playing big boy football, 12P football in the Sun Belt sometimes. Uh, so you just got to be very versatile. Uh, you got to be adaptable in the actions that you do as far as the defenses, uh, the structure of the defense and making sure you sound. And to me, that's that's the part on defense that's hard because the offense could do whatever they want. They could come up with all these plays and do all this stuff. But as a defensive guy uh, and a defensive uh, background, you got to be able to stop and be able to be sound on anything that you might see. Uh, so when I talk about being prepared, right, uh, that's why our coaches, man, I, I, I can promise you we got some great group of coaches, you know, Coach Greg, Coach OG, Coach Stuck, Coach Peeve, like, you know, even our support staff, like, literally, everybody on our defensive staff, we all pay the price. Like, we we grind. And we grind so that way we can make sure we put these kids in the best position possible. You know, Coach Reggie, one of the most elite support staff we got. Look, all that's preparation. You know, all these guys are getting our kids and putting them in position to be successful. And as long as we continue to do that, I think, you know, uh, playing defense will always be fun. You know, this year the new NCAA football games coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is going to be a first time for this current generation of players. They get to play as themselves. I yeah. know. What is what are your memories of the NCAA game? And now seeing that these kids get to play as themselves, what does it mean that the new game's coming out? Uh, man, I, I think it's great. It's just great for college football. You know, I remember when I was playing at Tulsa, they had the little blanking star under the lights, mm -hmm. and everybody was loving to play NCAA. You know, so I, I think it was a big deal back then. So you know, I think for the players. Uh, you know, you know, some like my kid is five, right? Dex Jr. is five years old. Well, right now he goes on YouTube and he looks at flag football and he looks at different things. He's imagining himself playing football. And I know it's a lot of kids that are looking up to these kids that's doing the same thing. So now you get to see yourself on the game. You get to see yourself uh, you know, live in a in a different aspect, you know. So I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I think it's good for college football, you know, uh, and not just Madden all the time. And but I think college football get to get a chance to to do some th great things in EA Sports, and I think the kids gonna really love that having that back. And I'm gonna be ready to play my kids in, in college football. I'm gonna beat them. I promise you, I'll be ready. <laughs> um, I just have one question about just like defense, really. You know, how Michigan had that sign stealing thing. Is that gonna be incorporated with the refs in the Sun Belt League about the? Having a 15 second rule in the headset, yeah, and like making sure that sign stealing doesn't really happen around college football. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I just talked about just the adaptability, right? Hey, if if, if it does happen, which I'm sure it will happen, then we we gonna we gonna overcome and adapt that. We we not really worried about that stuff. You know, we're going to be prepared for when that happens. So if we, we have the, the green dot and the mic and all that stuff, we'll be fine. I don't think it's really going to change anything for us. Because uh, in the end, like, we, we, we know we got to line up. Uh, we got to be sound and we got we to gotta be able to limit explosive plays and create takeaways and, and, and make sure that we tackling the ball. It's only one ball. It's only one ball. So in the end, if all our guys got that tenacious effort and attitude to the ball and they're very physical and disciplined, 
uh, we'll, we'll be fine. So I don't think that's going to be a big deal for us. We'll be over prepared for that when it comes. Thank you.